and we're back for another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be doing A9, which is the first part of the third Alexander. So, all right, time to activate the thing. I didn't read it, damn it. Do people ever hashtag comments on YouTube videos? Hashtag good job, Mifri. So the smoke is too thick, I can't see a damn thing. You'll have to press on alone. Interesting outfits that my team has. That's what you gotta love about the glamour system. Okay, let's do it. Let's kill. I'm going to assume that this is unbelievably easy and that raiding is a joke and that any idiot can do it. But of course, assumptions don't equal truth. <laughs> Oh, that was a convenient leap. Bit over the top, but whatever. I guess the real end game of this game is being able to do these dungeons with seven random people, not with seven professionals like raiders. Know, these professional groups that do like savage mode and all the rest of it and try and show off it's like yeah you're going with eight seven people who love raiding go with seven random see how you do that's the real challenge of raiding like if i made make an mmo in the future obviously i won't if i ever did i would literally do it where you can't have pre-made groups you just can't you have to always random queue you have to just work with the people that are available to you it might keep you more anonymous but whatever a lot of times in mmos like when i played blade and soul for example i loved that being anonymous in that game it was great didn't have to get any uh Don't have to make any friends or anything. It could be the, what all gamers strive to be, which is efficient loners. The fact that I'm having to home gang on this is the trash pull. This is not the boss. <laughs> World first. Still has that sort of almost porno music we we it's blood hi what's up you ready check the oh, Mifri is an elitist it's like no I'm a minimalist do the flipping minimum needed to win. <laughs> this is the last try, and then uh, we're gonna give up. Best episode ever.
It's like, Mifri, learn how to do the fight better. It's like, it's not my fault that I'm not getting healed. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think the group can handle it. It's just When both healers are weak, or both whatever are weak, then it hurts just everything. I mean, it was bad enough that they set the item level requirement to 230. Heal, 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 heal. I have the home gang. Just to be safe. One of the healers is dead. Exhilarating gameplay. Right here at youtube.com slash Mifri. Please subscribe. My gameplay is epic. This is so much fun. I can't believe how much fun I am having in this amazing, unbelievably fun dungeon. Mummy, what does sarcasm mean? So because the rails went red, I dodged that crap. <laughs> you can't crit me. <laughs> Look, I'm so pro, I'm gonna do double fell cleave because I am the best warrior in the history of warriors. See, look, I double fell cleaved. I am therefore amazing. Now look, I put Defiance back up. Look at those numbers, man. Then it says, better watch out. I'm coming for his throne. Fuck. I mean, um, whoops. <laughs> I guess as main tank, there's not much to this fight. It looks like they're having such a great time over there. Look at all that fun. Isn't that look fun, guys? When you don't have to just auto-attack a mob.
Mifri uses sarcasm to bore Alexander to death. I would join them if this was more but I'm I'm having so much fun already like like you think you're having fun over there you think that but you've got nothing on this this is like pure adrenaline action I am totally shaking I don't know if I will be able to stay conscious I might faint from this excitement Wow, the rock dropped right in front of me, so I didn't have to dodge. Isn't that convenient? Damn it. Exhilarating gameplay. I might literally cut out the actual fight and just put the story as the episode. I don't know what that one bar means. Yeah, general note to all, if you're not a tank, don't stand in front of the boss. In case of cleave and stuff like that. It's the general rules of all MMOs, not just for this game. Look, world first. We are totally the best group that's ever completed this fight. It was an exhilarating fight. I don't know how we survived. We worked really hard as a team. And we finally achieved victory. I feel so satisfied that this fight is now complete. Okay, let's see what loot there is. Okay, need. Four, 53, 77. If I win one thing, that'll do. Just one. I don't want to come back. And can I win this one, please? Woo, I won something. Yay. So, cool, let's exit and let's see what the story is. was on the edge of my seat the entire fight. Hello? Fine work, old friend. Thanks to you, we, ha we have our way in. Stay where you are. We're coming. So, we basically defeated the front door. But first, now you're clear, we had best get the barrier back up before the big fellow gets restless. Wedge, get ready the BBG2 and reactivate the barrier on my mark. 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 
kill. But the head's still poking out. Insert dirty joke here. So, excellent timing, Yishtola. Mifri has done it. We have a clear path into the heart of the beast. Good. Tis a relief to hear that at least one side of the operation proceeded according to plan. The same may not be said for the other. Our efforts to cut off the primal source of Aetha proved wholly ineffective. Why, uh, why quite, I cannot say, though I am hopeful that one among us can. Uh, what might? Uh, on the basis that she summoned the damn thing, you mean? I think you'd better explain. Like all primals, Alexander constantly draws Aether from the surroundings, both to sustain itself and to gain its strength. Master Matoy and I believe we could disrupt, or e at the very least inhibit, this process by means of Arkin... Arkinam... No, whatever. Arkinema. By creating a vast... Im passable etheric membrane between the primal and the land from which it drinks, eh? Which is why the old witch had me place those infernal devices of hers in every nook and cranny of this place. Are you telling me they w don't work? Yes and no. As far as we can tell, the Arkinema are functioning precisely as intended, and yet for reasons we have been unable to ascertain, they have had no measurable effect on the primal. All right, out with it, Maid. If there is anything you haven't told us, we need to hear it now. We are running out of options. I fear it will not avail us, but very well. It all began with a curious encounter in my younger days. I was out playing with my own one day when a stranger appeared before me. He told me every anything my heart wished for could be mine if I but heeded his words. I wonder if they're going to explain what that tear is on her cheek. So in my youth, I did not fully comprehend what the man was proposing at the time. Nevertheless, his words seemed to burn themselves into my very soul. Reunite the scattered shards of the Enigma Codex, he said, and perform the sacred rite before the ruins, and yet stand strong against the river's flow. Then and only then shall your hopes and dreams become reality. With that, he handed a relic, a horn, with a, a tip of metal, which seemed so foreign as to hail from another world. It would serve as a catalyst for the summoning, he explained. A gift from your friend Sorry, hang on. Travanchet. And then he was gone. So, Travanchet... I know the man. Our paths crossed during the time in Limsa, in the days before the Calamity. I might have guessed that the Asians had a hand in this. So, the horn which you speak was once rumoured to reside on Seal Rock. It is a lost relic of the ancients with the power to manipulate the etheric energy in the very air around us. The Scions have long pursued the horn. Fearing the devastation that might ensue were an artifact of such power to fall into the wrong hands. Finally, I do begin to see. If I have the right of it, Alexander's third corps is using the horn to draw Aether from the far and wide. Tis little wonder our plan failed. Even without moving an ilm, the primal possesses the means to drain not just this land of Aether, but our very star. Then, of course, our course is clear. If the old witch's magics won't avail us, we shall just have to go inside and dismantle the core the old-fashioned way. Indeed, and yet we must be wary. We have seen the course of time reverse once before. We may well see it again, even should the, we succeed in destroying our target. There is naught to prevent the Illuminati from simply returning the stricken core to its previous state. Aye, they are free to turn back the clock again and again, the primal growing stronger all the while. So what do we do then? We can't just give up.
So no, we press on. Lest we forget, controlling Alexander requires a codex, and the codex is but a useless piece of stone without the mind of the gobby girl. If we can rescue round rocks, quint figs will have no way to flip the hourglass. The circle of knowing once tasked me with recovering the horn, and twas through mine own negligence that Traventia acquired it. That it now endangers our world is my responsibility. Even were I not a scion, I should do all in my power to make amends. Whatever assistance I can offer, it is yours. Then it begins. I'll send word to our friends in Idleshire. Biggs Wedge, ready the Excelsior. Mifri, prepare for departure. Let Operation Rescue Round Rocks commence. Oh. They heard our secret plan. Damn it. Meow. Oh, there's two of them. Are they from different points of time? <laughs> Does his stomach hurt? Interesting, interesting. Okay, so let's talk to Biggs. So Seven Hells, it wasn't enough that those Illuminati lunatics had bleeding time machine, was it? No, it had to be a time machine with the power to destroy the whole bleeding world. I mean, I'm used to the future of Eorzea being at stake, but this is the future, past and present, all rolled into one. We have to get Round Rocks out of there, before those gobbies can put any more of their crazy schemes in motion. Speaking of gobbies, have you talked to old Bactrix lately? Turn out that the kitten you met wasn't Shanoa after all, just a doppelganger. He's already taken the little furball back to the shortstop and given it a name, uh, Shrewdinger, or however you pronounce it. Anyway, I'd best be heading back that way myself. See you there, Mifri. Okay, let's complete. Nice. So, obviously, um, the next episode will be us unlocking the second part of the final Alexander. So, anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and as always, goodbye from me, goodbye from Mifri, and I hope you can recover from the exhilarating clear that we just did. So, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.